Could you live in 54 square feet? Well, I did for a year and a half, and after a lot of travels and 15,000 miles around the country, my tiny house that is six by 10 finally died. And this week we are getting into the full build of taking this three season micro camper tiny home and turning it into a four season desert dwelling made out of cob, earth, and a lot of scrap and reclaimed materials. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into this build. One of the first structures we brought onto the property was my second tiny home. It's a 54 square foot tiny house on wheels that I lived out of for a year and a half traveling all over the country. In all of its travels and everything, we ended up sustaining some damage to it that made it not roadworthy. So we finally found it its permanent home and currently what we're working on is making it a four season home. Originally this was built with one inch of insulation because the thought process was if the weather wasn't good, it needs to move. Now that it's in its permanent home where we get hot hots and we get cold colds, we're working on cobbing the outside, plastering it, extending the roof line, and doing an interior renovation, this cob will act as insulation, keep the house uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. You can see that penetration, super exciting. That's gonna help protect this wood for a very long time. We are getting started on framing out our windows for the tiny house. And what this is gonna do is let us put cop all the way up um, and give a little bit of shade in the window, which will be good. Um, keep it a little cooler. Doing a cool little shelf on the far side and then just building these guys out. This is all just scrap stuff we got for free, four by Sosuke Bond and linseed oil. show you guys what we got here. The cows did a lot of damage to this when we first moved it to the property before we ever got it all fenced in and stuff. So you can see we'll be redoing this whole front. And we've been doing a lot of cob and rock work so getting it all tidied up. This cob work you can see a aluminum can sticking out here. This is all aluminum can so it's recycled materials and what that's going to do is insulate this through the winter and through the summer and then we're almost all the way up to this roof with the cob. Eventually we'll be redoing this roof totally to give it a bigger overhang. Coming to the inside here, we've already got it pretty well gutted and started getting it cleaned out. Floors are still pretty good, we'll just scrape those. Kind of breaks my heart to paint over uh, shiplap pine, but it is what it is. So it's best to just kind of start fresh. I'm gonna be painting in here, putting new trim up, getting everything back nice how it should be.
Hey, Richard. <laughs> what are you doing? Getting grass. Oh. Loading grass into the truck to pick it out to a desert. Oh. How confident are you in driving back? Oh, I'm good. I think it's fine. Cool. I'm not, we've done much jankier stuff that is much more sketchy, much longer distances. All right, I want to walk you guys around and give you a kind of a tour of what we're working on here. So these are a couple poles, we had our existing posts. This was from our previous shade sale. These are all concreted in the ground with our little gabions. What we're doing is we got these uh, gate post bracket things. And this is all just stuff I had laying around. Uh, drilled some holes in our posts, drilled some holes in our um, brackets. And then we're going to be drilling a hole in the fat end of our stick and basically sliding it on there. Once we get that in, um, we'll be taking our bamboo sheets and running them across this way with some baling wire. What I've been needing to do is replace this roof. And so if we go inside here, we have this wonderful skylight, which I love, but it was a school bus window and it's not really meant to be put up on a roof. And so we've definitely gotten some leakage issues on this guy. And then we also have had some leaks in the back during monsoon season. So that's no good. And so my goal for this weekend is to basically tear this roof off. Well, I figured out why uh, our roof was leaking uh, down the back because the frickin' mice chewed a hole through the roof. Through the roof. <laughs> Anyways, I got this guy laid out. Still need to get the vent van out. And I think the game plan is just to redeck this whole roof over this. Re-asphalt, paper, and build out the frame. I got the new sheeting on. The idea of this is putting fresh OSB up here on top of our old stuff. And I did seal the patch with the mouse incident. And then basically what I'm gonna do is put a two inch cut down, ripped down two by fours, uh, because I could get two inches of foam insulation and I didn't want to buy in foam insulation all the way up to three and a half inches because it doesn't need it. We're gonna put our framing 
out on top of this and then our foam and then another sheet of plywood. So it's kind of acting like a false roof, I guess, that is uh, securely nailed down to our previous roof. It's a weird retrofit. Everything out here is just kind of very figuring things out as you go and making it work. That's my whole world. So I've got all our roof in. I am gonna tape these seams just to be safe in because I have a bunch extra. And then we'll cut our hole for our skylight and our fan and move on to the next step. Okay, so our next step, I believe, is getting our mounts made for the skylight. And then, obviously, putting new decking on and putting a new roof on fixes the giant hole that was in the roof thanks to the mice. And hopefully, now that I don't have that really big gap roofing metal, because we're using what was left over for the little hyper adobe, that they won't be able to get under the roofing metal and eat my home anymore. So I think that'll fix the two big leaks and let's get to it. All right, I'm wrapping up today been spending a lot of time on roofs lately it seems but got quite a bit done so we got all of our sheeting on it definitely feels a lot sturdier up here um, I think some of that under stuff got pretty gross just because of a couple years of water damage we're <laughs> getting our framing up here so you can kind of see what we got so basically reframing this whole thing out with two inches of two by fours uh, two by fours ripped down from three and a half inches and framing out our skylight. They got all of our insulation up, all of our cracks filled up with spray foam. Yeah, we're probably, this is adding two inches of insulation and then I've got one inch in the ceiling. So we're probably at like R18-ish, which is pretty good. A standard home I think is about R14. You do lose most of your heat and cooling through the roof. So I think this will make a big difference on the comfort, not only the waterproofing of this building. So next step is to get the Rest of our sheeting up. how this always happens but I always end up doing roofing on May 15th which is always like our first really really hot day of the year and I keep burning my butt on asphalt paper. It's 
skylight and had some scrap, I guess corrugated plastic roofing stuff that I just painted white. I think it'll match really nice with the white roof. And yeah, this already looks exponentially better. Much more professional than it did before. So I gotta get this in with the trim and then we'll get our roof on. So definitely think this is gonna push into day five. Not quite used to the heat I'm kicking back up. So it's taking a little longer <laughs> than I would have hoped. Looking pretty good, I'm pretty happy with this. I got both of the skylight and the fan dried in, trimmed up, all of that. I'm gonna take a little afternoon siesta and start getting into that habit. Come back and finish the roof once the sun goes down here a little bit. All right, some very, very interesting things going on. That was scary, dramatic. <laughs> so I remember the first year I was here, we did not get a cloud in the entire month of May. And now I'm getting a little sprinkle, a little rain on, middle of May. Super weird. Done with the roof. Yes, sort of. Still need to come in and do aesthetic stuff. So I'm gonna come in and clean this off really well. And then I've got some elastomeric paint left over from our underground school bus and just coat this in a single coat so it looks a little nicer. Back out here on another day of the Hyper Adobe build. Today's project is to hopefully finish up this cob and maybe work on some plaster. So you can see we've got these little gaps here. That's just because I knew I was gonna put a new roof on. We've got some stuff in the back to take care of and kind of clean up our front here a little bit. This didn't have a proper overhang, so that's why we've kind of lost a lot of that cob. But it's all fixable, it's all just mud and dirt and stuff. And so yeah, first step today is to get a bunch of straw chopped. So that way we can start making some cob. So let's get to it. All right, so I've got most of our cob work done, filled up to the gap here. I had to patch up a few things, and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing about working with cob, is like, even if it does get damaged, you just mix a new batch and you throw some more on. I need to come in and work on this section here. What happened here is basically that water just kind of cascaded down and just took this whole section out. So I'm gonna dig this out, all the stuff that fell off. You can see though, like even these sections that did fall off, like they're still, you know, pretty solid as far as a, uh, you know, chunk of rock <laughs> goes. <laughs> This 
is our lime vat. And what this is, is hydrated type S lime that you can pick up at the big box stores. Um, I think right now it's like $22 for a 50 pound bag. This will hold around 250 pounds. And what we do with this is dump our powdered lime in here very carefully with mask and gloves and everything because this stuff is pretty noxious. And then we get a big two-handed drill, mix it all up and just let it sit in this water. The longer it can sit in here, the better. So you wanna let it sit for at least two or three days before you use it. This has been in here for, I don't know, several months. And basically it's just kind of like a sourdough starter where as it gets low, you just add more lime and let it soak. And so it's, it's a ongoing process that can literally sit for years and years and years as long as it has water topped out over it. Because what that water does is prevent the CO2 from binding with the molecules in the lime, which is what causes it to harden up. This is a lime plaster that has been finished. Um, we used uh, cement plaster for our shop over there. I prefer cement over lime, but cannot use cement over dirt. You have to use lime over dirt. So for our little cob house, we are using lime plaster. So we're starting to plaster on this. Uh, you can see it's kind of in rough shape. Uh, just because we've had it uncovered for a year or so. So we got all the cob work done and now I'm getting on plaster. The idea here is that I'm just going to do a full coat of our rough coat again, just to have one solid continuous piece, uh, especially you can see back here where we've lost a lot of the plaster. You know, we don't need to do another rough coat over the entire thing, but it's not gonna hurt. And then once I get another rough coat on, we'll come back with a coat of uh, finished plaster. And hopefully I can get at least the rough coat done today. Finished up the first coat of plaster and it is looking so good. I had just barely enough to get all the way around. But yeah, super happy with this. I did end up keeping the existing plaster here. I kind of tried to pull some off and it was on plenty good. So I'm gonna let this dry up and then we'll get on to the finished coat and the next steps of this project. But look how good this is looking. Super excited. So we're gonna be starting here on this side because it's in the shade and kind of working our way all the way around to this back side that's in the sun. I'm hoping by the time I get all the way around, this will be in the shade. This is the one nice thing about plaster is you do want to work in the shade and don't hopefully have to sweat as much. But what we're trying to do today is do a real big push and get this all done as one continuous piece. That's the goal at least. <laughs> so first thing I gotta do is wet the walls down. I like to wet the walls first, then go make my batch, then come back and re-wet it. And what that's gonna do is help that new plaster stick to the old plaster. Wet likes to stick to wet, wet does not like to stick to dry. Running you guys through our mixes, we have really four ingredients that we use. So clay, lime, sand, and water. For our first coat, you want to step out your materials. So you don't want to go straight from dirt to lime because that 
the clay in there kind of helps them bond together. And then the lime will stick to lime. Like likes to stick to like, like doesn't like to stick to other things. So for our first batch, we use these three gallon buckets and we do a six to one to one ratio. So six parts concrete sand. This is stuff you could get from a wash. Uh, we get it trucked in just because it's a lot easier, but you want something with like a variety of grit sizes. So some like smaller stuff, some bigger stuff, that's something that's really helpful. And if it's all super silty, um, it's not gonna work really well. And if it's all just really gravelly, it's not gonna work really well. So this is concrete sand specifically for this, works great. We have our sifted dirt. I go through and secondary sift this. So we don't want a ton of the bigger gravel pieces. So we just have this little guy and then this gets us a nice, good, fine, powdery clay. That's gonna help the lime, first layer of lime stick to the cob. And then we have our lime itself in these buckets. And this is our slacked lime, like I talked about before. So again, the first, first coat we use six to one to one. So three buckets of sand, half a bucket of lime, and half a bucket of clay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we also include straw, so I guess five ingredients. And what that straw does is help bind everything together. So it's kind of like acting like rebar in our concrete pad sort of thing. So this is all chopped straw. For our finished coat, which is what we're working on today, we do not need the clay anymore. So we use three to one ratio three full buckets of sand, one full bucket of lime, and then instead of the straw, which you totally could use as your finish coat, I just don't personally like the look of it, we use what is called fiber mesh. It's relatively inexpensive. I wanna say this was like 10 or 15 bucks. See, this is fiber mesh. It's just kind of like a little plasticky sort of clear thing so that kind of helps bind everything together and you don't see these little fibers when the plaster is done so it looks a little nicer in my opinion so we'll just use kind of a couple pinches of this in the mix with our sand lime and water It's looking pretty good. You can see some of our stuff from this morning starting to dry out a little bit. It's still kind of damp, which is great. I forget how much work plaster is. My arm is shot and yeah, we're really pretty tired because I've been out here since like 7 a.m. But I've got this last little chunk, our back wall here and a little bit on the side. So I'm thinking two more batches, hopefully we'll do it. Plaster work is done. It's exciting. This has been a very, very long project. Um, it's always funny kind of going through these and you get the cob on, you're like, wow, that looks so good. And then you get the rough coat on, you're like, wow, the cob looks so bad and this looks so much better. And then you get the finished coat on, you're like, wow. So I still got clean up, I've still got paint. But that was the biggest push on this build. Now it's just aesthetics paint, uh, fixing up the inside, all that. So I am absolutely, absolutely beat. I very much need of a shower to get this lime off me because I can tell it's burning my skin and I need a beer. So that's the plan for the evening. Clean up and be done. Yay! And super happy with how this is coming out. I just want to come see the place before it got too dark. And here our uh, carpenter bees are getting in for the night and yeah it's looking really good i kind of
came in here because we had a little extra plaster and just kind of worked on that shape a bit. Next project is going to be redoing this front and the little cabinet compartment thing here. But you can see it's bright. I'm, I'm going to be getting some color paint something or another for this soon. But yeah, this is still still drying out from this morning. Kind of cool. Good, good day's worth of work. <laughs> this house closer to being wrapped up. So I got our trim repainted and underneath, our eaves painted. I still have some work to do on the door. The windows seem to clean up pretty well. I need to just get some clean water over here, but I think I can clean these off without having to repaint them, which will keep that like nice burnt look on there. And yeah, next up is the exciting part and getting the stain on the wall. So I have this concrete stain that I'll be using for this. I used it for our workshop, which that was a cement plaster versus lime plaster. I'm curious to see how it does on the lime because my thought process, or the reason I'm doing it, the out of the can kind of thing instead of a natural pigment like I did on our pump house, is our pump house has had to be repaired and now I don't have that exact same mix for the repair coat basically so my thought process is if i get something that's off the shelf out of the can if i do need to repair this plaster down the road then i can get that same can and hopefully it'll somewhat match So I got our first coat on, and to be totally honest, I hate it. I hate it. It looks like an Easter egg. It's horrible. <laughs> the splotchiness and stuff that's going on and the paint streaks and stuff, that's totally normal with this product for the first coat just because different areas of the plaster are going to have different amounts of grain versus lime versus whatever and so it'll soak up a little bit differently. We were supposed to do like three or four coats on this. Came back over here and did a second coat of just what I had left in the can. Still hate it. <laughs> so what I was going for was more of a gray with like a slight blue undertone versus a blue Fortunately, I have to get another can anyways because the one can did one coat. This is supposed to be three or four coats. So what I'm gonna do is just get a different color and get a, a more neutral gray and kind of use this as like the underpainting. And then hopefully just a little bit of that blue will come through, but it'll be mostly like a gray. I may try a little warmer tone too, but not all is lost. I think it'll turn out good. I just need to get another can of paint when I go into town today. Okay, so I got a second coat on the sprayer. It's definitely the way to go on this. Um, this is just the cheap Harbor Freight sprayer. It doesn't work super great with paint, but this stuff is so liquidy, it works great. Still not loving the color. It doesn't seem to be like sticking, I guess. We've kind of got this weird purpley color going on now. I like it better, but I still don't really care for it. I've got probably about half a gallon of the cinnamon left. 
And then I did find a darker stain, which I think there's most of this can left, which is our touch-up paint for the workshop. So that's a lot darker. I'm just gonna keep spraying it until I get it to a place that I like. I really hope I don't have to come back with paint on this, uh, just cause I, I don't like the way paint looks on plaster, uh, cause it kind of fills in all that texture that you get with the plaster and just kind of really takes the life out of it. But also, yeah, I don't love this. I don't love the colors so far. So we're just gonna get back at it and see what happens. morning everyone it is already a nice hot day out here middle desert in almost july so goal for today is to wrap up paint on this project i have a darker color yet still to basically cover hopefully what i don't like up to this point this will be matching what the shop is i'm hoping it will soak in nicely because this will be our fifth coat of this concrete stain I don't think I'll be doing concrete stain again. I think I would be definitely switch back to the earthen uh, pigments in the lime wash. It seems to be sticking a lot better than concrete stain. We're going to get to it and hopefully get this done before the worst of the heat hits for the day. Quite done with painting. Finally, I like. If you guys like this house and want to build your own tiny house and call the Terraform Homestead your home, check out the video we've got queued up for you right now. It is our tiny house building residency program to basically give people a hand up and help them build their own tiny homes out here on our property. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. This has been a really fun project and I'm really grateful to have this tiny home that I lived in for a year and a half be in its permanent location and be useful for years to come for other people. Thank you guys for watching. Go build something cool.